This video looks at Atkinson and Schifrin's multi-store model of memory, which is one of the theories of memory that you need to know for the cognitive approach. In order to be able to understand this theory of memory, it's important that you understand what the key words on the screen mean at the moment. So when I'm referring to capacity, I'm talking about the size of the memory store. When I'm talking about encoding, I'm talking about how memories are registered as, memoried, as memories. The storage refers to how they remain as memories after they've been registered. Retrieval will talk about how we access memories when an output is needed, so when we need to remember something. The mode of representation is the format in which the information has been stored, and the duration is how long the information will remain in the store for. Now, Atkinson and Schifrin's multi-store model of memory is quite basic in terms of the fact that it suggests that memory is made up of three stores. And it suggests that memory works in a linear format. So if you look at the flow diagram on the screen at the moment. Now, the first store is the sensory store. This is where we take in information from our senses. So our eyes, ears, uh, touch, smell, etc. Now, this suggests that information in the sensory store will only last up to two seconds, and we must pay attention to that information for it to be able to pass into the short-term memory. If we don't pay attention to it, it's lost through trace decay. Once we've paid attention to a memory, uh, to information from our senses, it will pass into our short-term memory. Now, information in our short-term memory can last up to 30 seconds and is mainly auditory that we hold. It then suggests that if this information is not rehearsed, that will also be lost through trace decay. But if information within the short-term memory is rehearsed, it will be able to be saved within the long-term memory. In the long-term memory, this information could last years, and it's said that the duration and capacity of the long-term memory is unlimited. Information that's stored within the long-term memory, according to Atkinson and Schifrin, is mainly semantic, which means that it's things to do with meaning. And, in order to be able to retrieve information from the long-term memory, we often rely on a queue. If we look in a little bit more detail then, the sensory store, which is the first store as proposed by the multi-store model, is a buffer for all the information in the environment that bombards our perceptual system, ensuring that we're only paying attention to the information that we need to take information from. The sensory store will hold information for the briefest period, up to two seconds, until attention is paid to it. If attention is paid to it, the information will pass into our short-term memory. The short-term memory is a very limited store for attended information, and it is believed to hold around seven pieces of information, give or take two, so up to, from five up to nine, for around 18 to 30 seconds. The rehearsal from here means that the information can be held for longer duration, and this is how it is passed into the long-term memory. If we look at details of the short-term memory, which you need to be able to refer to in an exam, we can see that the capacity is five to nine items. However, chunking can help. So, for example, not trying to remember ten individual numbers, but chunking the numbers up to items of ten, and then that will class as one piece of information. You can see that the duration is 18 to 30 seconds. If we repeat the material, it will be rehearsed, which means it goes into our long-term memory. And it's thought that mainly coding within the short-term memory is acoustic, so it refers to sound. If that memory is rehearsed, it will go into our long-term memory, which has a potentially infinite capacity and can hold memory for a few minutes or many years. This is because the capacity is unlimited and the duration is actually that potentially material can never be forgotten and will last in the long-term memory for the rest of our lives. The coding of information within the long-term memory is said that we store material in pictures, so visually, we might store information in sound, so you remember what somebody said to you, or by meaning, and this adding meaning to the material helps in recall. Peterson and Peterson in 1959 did a study that strongly suggests the capacity of the short-term memory as suggested by multi-store model. They did a lab experiment where 24 participants had to remember trigrams, which is basically meaningless three constant syllables, so for example T, G, H. To prevent the rehearsal of this um, trigram, because that would obviously put it into long-term memory, they were asked to count backwards in threes or fours from a specified random number until they saw a random light appear. And this is known as the Brown-Peterson technique. After that, participants were asked to recall the trigrams. Now, the findings found that participants who were only, who were only um, asked to remember the trigrams for a short amount of time, where a three-second delay was given, remembered 80% of the trigrams. However, after 18 seconds, less than 10% of the trigrams were recalled. 
Now, if we conclude this, this would suggest that the trigrams that were recalled within three seconds suggest that they were held in the short-term memory. Once it passed 18 seconds, which is the duration of the short-term memory, only 10% of the trigrams were remembered. Now, this suggests that because the information wasn't recalled, it wasn't passed into long-term memory, and therefore the memory decayed and was forgotten. Another um, study that can be used to support multi-storm model is the Glanz and Kunitz study of 1966. In this study, the words were read aloud, slowly and clearly, and, it ha and participants were asked to recall at the end how many they could remember. Now you can see on here that the words at the top were remembered because of the primary effect. Now this means that participants tended to recall the first words that are in the list. If you look at the bottom words, this is called the recency effect, and this is where participants often remembered these words because they were at the end of the list. At the end of the list, sorry. Um, and this will work even if the list is made longer. Now the middle proportion of the words are remembered much less often than the ones at the beginning at the end of the list. If we were to evaluate the multi-storm model, a multi-storm model has made important contributions to research and has generated a lot of support. For example, the two studies that we just looked at, Clance and Kunitz and Peterson and Peterson. The evidence supporting it has been found through experiments, so we would say that these studies are reliable because they can be replicated and they will have put a lot of controls in place to ensure a cause and effect relationship between the IV and the DV. The experimental research is scientific, so the sound body of knowledge can be built up. Support for the model doesn't just come from experimental evidence. Some of the strongest evidence for the, the multi-storm model comes from the, ex the existence of a distinction between the short-term memory and the long-term memory, which comes from case studies of brain damage patients such as HM or Clive Waring. An example of an exam question on the multi-storm model of memory, you might be asked to identify one model. Within the new specification, multi-storm model could obviously be named as well as the theory that you have to recall. You might be asked to describe or evaluate it. It's important that you have a basic understanding of forgetting. Now, forgetting is when we have an inability to recall or recognise something that we have previously stored as a memory. Now, they might, this might be because of lack of availability, so decay, the memory trace has disappeared, therefore the memory is decayed. Or it may be because of lack of accessibility, so there isn't a cue present that may trigger the memory that we once remembered. For example, think about the idea that when you smell something, it might remind you instantly of the last time you smelt that, and therefore the memory that was encoded at that time. That's because the smell is acting as a cue to retrieve the memory.